Okay, I failed you in Dallas, Texas, Tennessee fans, because honestly, there's too much going on. You can't catch every quote. So I didn't catch this one, but I did over the weekend because there's like five different rooms going. Boo Carter, other than Nico Ia Maleava, is, I believe, the most anticipated player on Tennessee's roster. Caleb, would you agree or disagree with that? Thoroughly agree. I don't know if I don't know if I use thoroughly properly there, but you know, I think you did. And it's not that he's necessarily deserving of it. It's because he's got a cool name. He's highly rated. He's in state and it's a good storyline. I mean, it is. And and the Colorado thing. Yeah. I was going to say the Colorado thing. And for those who wonder why recruiting services, how recruiting services work, you guys all got excited about Boo Carter when you realized he didn't commit to Colorado after Colorado wanted him badly. This is, how recruiting services work when they see a school wanting somebody they're like oh we should up his star ratings you know that happens dave Uh, it does okay so this quote came from josh heifel quote boo's been really good inside of our program he's really grown off the field and because of that he's grown inside our program too is it wrong for me to think that that's a little bit of a red flag that he needed to grow inside the program. I don't think he – he never said that about Nico, for instance. He said he's come in and done a fantastic job. Am I being too hypersensitive to that comment to say that Boo Carter maybe had some immaturity and needed to grow up to be ready to play immediately? And I, I make this assessment – on that quote and based off what I was told talking to those in Chattanooga that had been around Boo Carter. And they said, he's a fantastic player, but he does need to mature and he needs coaching. So is this a good thing to read about Boo Carter or is this a scary thing to read about Boo Carter? I think it's a neutral thing to read about Boo Carter. I agree with you. I think it's a sign he was immature and it's never a good thing to be immature. But Dave, He's a freshman. He's an 18-year-old. Half the freshmen that ever arrive are immature. And a lot of it comes down to how good the culture is, quite honestly. And you've talked about culture of a program for a while. And according to the reports you have, Tennessee's culture is amazing. So mm-hmm. it's very possible Boo grew in the culture. Let's 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 take the – you don't think Nick Saban brought in some immature kids as freshmen, but you don't think the culture of Alabama helped them develop and season themselves as they got older in the program? We can – We can talk about the two former eras. I mean, former in the 90s, Fred White talks about it all the time. There was a culture there where when you arrived on campus, even if you were immature, you were either going to grow up or not be able to handle the program and leave. And then when you were really covering them in the 2000s, there was no culture and players remained immature as they grew in the program, embarrassingly so. And then, you know, eventually... uh, he had a bucket full of you know what in 2005 and it just <laughs> um what was it the phrase Derek Dooley had the phrase don't let the s creep in yes um yes uh, former let the s creep in a lot and he had a bucket full by 2005 so i think right now as as of right now everything we've seen Heibel's not letting the s creep in so wouldn't you believe that maybe Boo Carter is immature but the culture of Tennessee could help mature him fair and we We want to be clear. You're supposed to be immature at 18 years old. However, Tennessee really needs him. I believe they have him slated to start at strong safety. So, Caleb, is is Josh Heupel manipulating the media a little bit to get Boo Carter's name out there to then put a little bit of pressure on him to say, hey, this is you. You've done you've done well to this point, but you've got to take it another step. Thoughts on that? Brought to you by Don Self. Customer service still matters. For, for over 40 years, they have built their business on taking care of their customers. Call 423-396-2126 or go to donself.net right below donself.net. What do you think, Caleb? There's merit to it because Amari Thomas also touted Boo Carter, by the way. He sent Boo Carter a major shout out. He said, Boo Carter's going to make a lot of plays this year. That was Amari Thomas's exact quote. And funny enough, 
the two Amari Thomas is the leader of the defense and two people he cited as players who were working hard and who he touted were James Pierce and Drew Carter. And Dave, do we not feel there's some red flags with both of them with some situations they've gotten into themselves into? Not like legal issues. I mean, with James Pierce, there was one, but there's concern with both of them and their maturity levels, isn't there? Yes. I think if I think you're just hoping to get to de- you're either hoping he vastly matures or you hope to get to December without him getting in trouble with James Pierce. And I say that not as a shot at the young man. He's just been through a lot. And I can't share it, but he's been through a lot. So and I think this, there's – go ahead. Yeah, no, you're right. And this is – I've been saying Boo Carter. Could he be like 2007 Eric Berry? I'm going to retract that a little bit because, again, there's nothing wrong with being immature as a freshman, but Eric Berry was not immature as a freshman. He was like a senior the minute he was on campus, wasn't he, Eric Berry? Uh, yeah, he was a senior when he was a sophomore in high school. He was a senior in college when he was a sophomore I mean, in high school. He's the most mature player I've ever covered coming in. Yeah, he was. He was a very mature player. And, um, and I mean, it, one of the best people of all time in Tennessee. And so I, I think that's an unfair standard for Boo Carter to, to, to hold him to, honestly. So I think that I think he could be a little immature. I don't think it's a red flag. I think Heifel is trying to force him out there. Maybe a little bit too soon. Heibel does have a track record of forcing, trying to force people out there when maybe he shouldn't. Um, he tried to put pressure on Cooper Mays to play last year against Florida, I felt like, when he publicly said that we expect him to play. And I agree. Cooper Mays wasn't playing. So I think that – I think Heibel does do that. But I think this is orchestrated in a sense of – I think they do believe Boo Carter can mature. And I think they do believe and, – and luckily, again – I mean, I guess it's, you know, I feel like free safety has a little bit more of a quarterbacking of the secondary than strong safety. Strong safety, you just hit, don't you? A lot of times and just play yes. the ball. It's it's a little bit more simple, but you got to you gotta be good with your run fits too. Uh, so, I mean, I think that is a factor. Now, uh, I got to address this YouTube thing. So I found this new neat little function where I can actually set up a question. So it'll be there throughout the show. Instead of the poll question, we're going to make it a little bit different. So it's a Q&A. What freshman are you most excited about seeing this upcoming season? And let's talk about true freshman, not Nico, redshirt freshman. But who else do you think makes the list? Is anybody even close to Boo Carter, Caleb? Mm, well, I think we've talked a lot about Mike Matthews. I think Mike Matthews has some rare talent as a receiver to the point where I think he and Nico could develop a wavelength. Um, one of the ones I'm high on, another one, Jordan Ross. I mean, again, we talk about James Pierce all the time, and we should. Jordan Ross could steal a starting spot on the other side. That guy's a rare – I mean, he is a James Pierce talent, a rare, rare, rare talent out of Alabama. I think some of the offensive linemen, um, Bennett Warren coming out of Texas uh, could, and Max Anderson, two linemen out of Texas. What have I always said about Texas recruits? They're very well seasoned when they get to college. Their ceiling's not that high, but they are well seasoned. So they are more ready to play early. And so you could see either Max Anderson or Bennett Warren be plugged into a, be plugged in to the offensive line as a rotational guy. But Jordan so, Ross, Mike Matthews, Boo Carter are the top three. Oh, sorry. A couple of notes on the message board, and I agree with all of them. Boo's a dog. I agree with that. Crystal says, it's normal. Dave used to be the big fish and get his way. He was, and he did. Now he has, I'll put that part in. Now he has to compete with other dudes of the same talent level. Just a bit of a shock. I agree with that. Mead Drinker says, some people brought up Boo being a a different high schools as a red flag. Yeah, that was a red flag. I think anytime you change high schools, it's a red flag. But it's not like it used to be. Used to be, it was a huge red flag if you changed high schools during your high school career and there wasn't an obvious move by your family or something. I don't think it's nearly as big nowadays. Uh, the hip- How did I mess this up? I'm sorry. Real quick. Crystal Lyles is right. Peyton Lewis. That's the freshman I'm most excited about. What What is wrong with me? He's the one I've been touting the whole time, but I just forgot he was a true freshman. It almost feels like Peyton Lewis has been around. We've talked about him so much, so that's understandable. 